He is known for his exceptional skills as a double bass player and composer. He gained popularity for his virtuosic performances and command of the double bass. His name is Giovanni Bottasini. In the small town of Crema, Lombardy, a young boy named Giovanni Bottasini was introduced to the world of music by his father, a talented clarinetist and composer. Even at a tender age, Giovanni showed promise, playing the timpani with the Teatro Sociale in Crema. But fate had other plans for him. In 1835, Giovanni's father sought a scholarship for him at the Milan Conservatory, but due to their financial constraints, only two positions were available, double bass or bassoon. In a remarkable turn of events, Giovanni prepared for the double bass scholarship in just a matter of weeks and managed to secure it. Under the guidance of Luigi Rossi, Bottasini excelled at the conservatory, winning a prize of 300 francs for his solo playing after just four years of study. With this money, he acquired a valuable instrument and embarked on a career that would earn him the nickname, the Paganini of the double bass. Bottasini traveled extensively, spending time in America and serving as the principal double bassist in the Italian opera in Havana, where he eventually became the director. It was during this time that he premiered his first opera, Cristoforo Colombo, in 1847. In 1849, Bottasini made his debut in England, captivating audiences with his virtuosic double bass solos. His exceptional command of the instrument brought him immense popularity in London and throughout the country. Alongside his success as a performer, Bottasini also gained recognition as a conductor. From 1855 to 1857, he held the position of conductor at the Théâtre des Italiens in Paris, where he premiered his second opera, La Cidio di Firenze, in 1856. He continued to conduct in various cities, including Palermo and Barcelona, and embarked on concert tours across Europe. Bottasini's talent extended beyond performance and conducting. He composed several operas, including Il Diavolo della Nate, Vinci Guerra, and Ero e Leandro. His opera Marion Delorme, with a libretto by Arrigo Boito, showcased his versatility as a composer. Additionally, Bottasini wrote numerous works for the double bass, including two concertos, the Grand Duo Concertant for two double basses, and many pieces for double bass and piano. His compositions remain an essential part of the repertoire for accomplished double bassists to this day. As his career flourished, Bottasini also made significant contributions to the field of music education. Shortly before his death in 1888, he was appointed as the director of the Parma Conservatory, recommended by none other than the renowned composer Giuseppe Verdi. Bottasini's legacy lives on, not only through his captivating performances and compositions but also through his influence as an educator. His devotion to the double bass and his tireless efforts to elevate its status as a solo instrument continue to inspire musicians worldwide. Giovanni Bottasini, known as the Paganini of the double bass, was a highly acclaimed composer whose virtuosic skill on the bass rivaled that of the renowned violinist, Paganini. His contributions to bass technique transformed the perception of the instrument, showcasing its diverse and versatile capabilities. As a result, many virtuoso bass players draw inspiration from the early renaissance of the double bass. One of Bottasini's greatest achievements was his exceptional instrument, a bass built by Carlo Antonio Testor in 1716. This unique instrument possessed a remarkable sound that captivated audiences. Surprisingly, the Testor bass had a tumultuous history, passing through the hands of several unknown bass players. In the 1830s, it nearly met its demise as it sat neglected backstage in a marionette theater in Milan. In 1838, Bottasini came across the Testor bass and recognized its potential. He purchased the instrument for 900 lire, saving it from obscurity. Over the years, the Testor bass underwent various modifications. It was initially converted to a four-stringed instrument, then to a three-stringed one, before being changed back to its original four-string configuration. Today, it resides in the possession of a private collector in Japan, serving as a testament to Bottasini's profound connection with his instrument. Bottasini's influence extended beyond his instrument. He was also one of the first performers to adopt the French-style bow grip for the double bass. This grip, previously used exclusively by violinists, violists, and cellists, allowed Bottasini to explore new possibilities in his playing. By embracing this technique, he expanded the expressive range of the double bass, further solidifying his reputation as a trailblazer in the field. Do you want to explore more composers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.